Yes, you have a question. Okay, in a sense, uh, in the Old Testament, it says, uh, God says, I am that I am. Is this, in essence, the same feeling? Yes. It is. Okay. It is. It is, okay. Yeah. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. What okay. the I am that I am is one of the main sentences of one of the Vedas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There are four sentences like that okay. that describe everything. Different perspectives of the I am. Yeah. But still, I am. I am. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Now, this is um, the famous uh, Schrodinger equation. I don't want you to be alarmed by this uh, squ uh, squiggly things here. But what is of interest is uh, this, this symbol here. This one here. Or this one here. That's psi, or is, it stands for the wave function. And this is what Schrodinger, after De Bruyne proved that matter is a wave, he came up with this equation. It is this equation which is in charge even for this laser, laser dot I'm doing. It's because of that equation. Now, it looks quite complicated, but we won't go into that. But what I'm saying is, this is the equation in charge of everything we see today. The cell phones, the cameras, the computers, all the electronics we see is based on this. Tra Coherence. Coherence, yeah. Transistors, everything. Now, why I'm showing you this equation is, is what happened after that. There, there was a scientist by the name of David Bohm um, here. And he was amazing physicist. He took um, that equation we saw earlier and he, he broke into two parts. One that um, was behaving as Newtonian physics, the other as non-classical. So let me just read out what he said. Bohm effectively partitioned this equation into two parts or terms. A classical term that essentially reproduces Newtonian physics, and a non-classical term that he calls quantum potential. The classical term treats the electron as an ordinary particle, as in classical physics. The non-classical quantum potential is a wave-like term that provides information to the electron, linking it to the rest of the universe through guiding equation. De Broglie-Bohm theory is a theory that applies primarily to the whole universe. That is, there is a single wave function governing the motion of all of the particles in the universe according to the guiding equation. So, David Bohm was famous for this. He took that equation and split into two. He split into two in a such a way, even Einstein admitted, yes, you're right. And in fact, David Bohm was a protege of Einstein. If anybody could understand Einstein, it was David Bohm. He said, look, I've taken this equation of Schrodinger and I split it into two. And when I split it into two, you can, you can work with that equation as a Newtonian classical physics. And when you come to quantum mechanics, you can come on the, this side, non-classical side, and use it as quantum potential, and it's, which is wave-like. And it still give you the same answers as any other uh, theories in quantum mechanics which at the time were about six to seven. So Einstein was happy. He said, mathematically, you are right. You have split the equation perfectly. But what happened after that, David Bohm, he was in touch with a great uh, uh, Jnana yogi called Krishna Murthy. And he had a lot of conversations with him, David Bohm, because he was a great philosopher, very sharp mind, Krishna Murthy. And and he had a lot of conversations with him. And it's interesting to see the conversations on the internet, how they actually talk. And having had a great dialogue with him for years, um, he, he, changed, he he's changed his mind and become a little bit of a mystic. And he said, this quantum potential and this guiding equation here, 
there's something about this quantum potential here, um, this thing here. There's something very mystical about it. So he goes further now, and don't worry about this, but this thing here is the guiding equation. That, what I showed you in the equation, is represented by, in mathematical form, um, that's the wave function. And that is the, the guiding equation. So it's there, just to know that it's there. Okay, now, this is the quantum potential, which I want you to understand. Um, it, it's very interesting. He's looking at the quantum potential mathematically, and he's looking at it very carefully. What is this quantum potential that guides the electron? And it's so fantastic. He looked at it very deeply, and he said, it's, this is his, these are his words. It differs, however, that it has no known physical source. So this quantum potential, we do, know, do not know where it originates from, number one. And then, even more unacceptable, the action of the quantum potential depends only on its form and not on its intensity, if you like amplitude, uh, which means that it, it, it effect doesn't diminish with increasing space and time. So that quantum potential stays same wherever it goes in the universe because it's only dependent on the form only, not on its amplitude. The form of the quantum potential gives information that is communicated instantaneously which appears to violate the speed of light. Now this quantum potential gives inf information instantaneously. And here we have Einstein who says, you cannot travel more than speed of light. Yet this quantum potential can. And thanks to John Bell, who, who said that yes, there is instantaneous communication. Yes, you have a question. So in essence, what uh, you're saying there is essentially, we're talking about a scalar wave at that point. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Okay. There's no, no amplitude here at no the moment. No amplitude and the fact that it is hyper luminous or hyperluminal yeah. in speed. Yes. Okay. It, it's instantaneous, basically. And we'll see how, when it comes to holographic theory, why it is like that. Okay. Excellent. Because that's where non-locality comes in. Um, and that's what Einstein was not very happy about. That is action at, at a distance, the spookiness in the whole thing. Well, the first sentence, the, the, the key word there is no known physical yes. source. That's, I mean, to be underlined. That's it, <laughs> because that's what, um, uh, it, it, it'll come to it in a minute. It, it really, we're talking about metaphysical realm now. Exactly. It's, it's beyond physics now, right. because it has no physical source. And that's where I think uh, the idea of the watcher and the, uh, what, what is being watched comes out, because the watcher has no physical source. Right. What is being watched, yes, it has, but not the watcher. So quantum potential is very interesting, a very mystical thing. And then he says, um, uh, speed of light. This quantum potential could be seen as providing information from a metaphysical realm in the sense that it is beyond space and time. In other words, it is non-local. John Bell provides this proof using EPR experiment. You've probably heard of it, which is Einstein Polosky Rosen experiment. Uh, proven by Aspect later. It was a physicist in Paris. He proved it that what, uh, uh, what has been predicted here beyond the speed of light, instantaneous, is true. And he proved it in, in Paris in 1982 or something. So Bohm believes Aspect's findings imply that reality does not exist, that despite its apparent solidity, the universe is at heart a phantasm or a splendid, gigantic hologram. So, despite its apparent solidity, the universe is at heart a gigantic hologram. So, I mean, this is all solid. We can feel it, right? Yet, he's saying at the heart of it is a gigantic hologram. So, the thing is, first of all, if somebody can explain me, why is this solid? You're telling me it's a hologram. Why is it so solid? Why does it feel so real? And that's how, what we're going to see later on, why it feels solid. Although it's an illusion. 
although it's an illusion. And what more, science says that this thing is 99.99% empty space. Right? So what is there to make me so, feel so solid? And, and, and that requires a special perception to see that. And that's what we're going to see uh, later on, later half of the program, where you'll, you'll see, yes, he's right, absolutely right. I now see why the things are so real, so solid. And once you see that perception, then you, you will just know, yes, absolutely. It makes sense all, all the way. And, and how it's connected with yoga, especially Kundalini, is another milestone. Because we will later on see, for the first time ever, it's never been proved in the entire world that this quantum potential turns out to be the Kundalini. Because nobody to this date, no physicist knows what this wave function is, this quantum potential. What is it exactly? Nobody knows. This is the first time ever it's been shown that this quantum potential is in the metaphysical realm, it is the Kundalini. And, and even at that, it's a sleeping Kundalini. And that is the hologram we're going to examine. And how it is in a hologram, ends up as a hologram, we will see that also.